Exercise-induced bronchoconstriction describes a transient and reversible contraction of bronchial smooth muscle after physical exertion that may have symptoms from very mild to severe. Dyspnea, discomfort during breathing, chest tightness, wheezing, and cough. Sometimes symptoms doesn't occur at all. Exercise-induced bronchoconstriction previously called exercise-induced asthma, but this bronchoconstriction can be presented without asthma. Five minutes of high-intensity aerobic training can be enough to induce symptoms within 15 minutes. Symptoms can last from 30 minutes to 90 minutes. Occasionally, some individuals will experience a second wave, late phase, of symptoms 4 to 12 hours after stopping exercise. Late phase symptoms are frequently less severe and can take up to 24 hours to resolve. People suffering from exercise-induced bronchoconstriction may avoid exertion due to symptoms of breathlessness, cough, chest tightness, and wheezing. Exercise avoidance has been shown to increase social isolation in adolescents, and it can lead to obesity and poor health. Exercise that exposes you to cold, dry air is more likely to cause asthma symptoms than exercise involving warm and humid air. Other triggers that can make IBS symptoms worse. Pollution levels. High pollen counts. Exposure to other irritants, such as smoke and strong fumes. A recent cold or asthma episode. Exercise-induced bronchoconstriction occurs sometimes in 90% of people with asthma. And up to 20% of those without asthma. Elite athletes have an increased prevalence of 30% to 70%, especially in winter sports athletes and women. Athletes frequently seek medical attention for respiratory symptoms. Asthma is a significant health concern, and exercise-induced bronchospasm can indicate poor asthma control. Diagnosis Clinical diagnosis by symptoms has low sensitivity and specificity, and some patients are asymptomatic. Standardized testing for diagnosis includes direct and indirect methods and usually involves spirometry measurement of FEV1 changes from baseline expressed as a percent decrease. Direct stimulation of smooth muscle receptors by methacholine to induce bronchoconstriction is well established. Sensitivity at predicting IBA has been reported to be 58.6% to 91.1%. Indirect testing, which is more specific for exercise-induced bronchospasm, can involve aerobic exercise in a controlled environment with cold, dry air as these conditions are known to precipitate IBE in susceptible individuals. Treatment Most people with exercise-induced bronchoconstriction can continue to exercise and remain active by treating the symptoms with asthma medications and taking preventive measures. Exercise has paradoxically been shown to improve exercise-induced bronchospasm severity, pulmonary function, and reduce airway inflammation in people with asthma and exercise-induced bronchospasm. First-line treatment, inhaled short-acting beta-2 agonists before exercise, also called SABA if symptoms are not well controlled with the SABA or patient is using SABA daily, additional medications can be added. So second-line treatment is daily inhaled corticosteroids, ICS. Inhaled corticosteroids may take two to four weeks for the maximal benefit. This corticosteroids appears to be more effective in patients with underlying asthma and are dose-dependent. ICS is not effective when used intermittently before exercise. ICS has multiple well-studied benefits in patients with asthma, including a reduction in mortality. Also, daily leukotriene receptor antagonist is effective to control exercise-induced bronchoconstriction, it may take two to four weeks for the maximal benefit. Leukotriene receptor antagonist, including Montelukast, Zephyrlocast, and Xylutin, provide longer-lasting bronchodilation, and are not associated with tolerance. Also high-quality evidence exists for adding mast cell stabilizer, MCSA, before exercise. An antihistamine may be beneficial in patients with underlying allergies. 
ATS strongly recommends against, with high-quality evidence, the daily use of long-acting beta-2 agonists, LABA, because the potential side effects do not outweigh the benefits. Non-pharmacologic treatments. Caffeine may offer protection against bronchoconstriction and decreased ventilatory dead space and decreases exercise-induced hypoxemia and respiratory muscle fatigue when used before exercise. Low-salt diet and supplementation with fish oil and vitamin C may be beneficial in some patients. A Cochrane review of vitamins C and E to protect from oxidative damage found insufficient evidence to make a recommendation. American Thoracic Society, ATS, recommends against lycopene supplementation. Secondly, masks to promote warming and humidification of the air with exercise are weakly recommended with low-quality evidence and may be as effective as using a Saba. Thirdly, wearing a mechanical barrier mask and or avoiding exercise in environments high in pollen, allergens, ozone, exhaust, and high levels of chlorine can reduce IBE. IBE occurrence is dependent on what sport is played. High-risk sports include long episodes of exercise greater than 5 to 8 minutes in certain environments such as cold, dry air or chlorinated pools such as long-distance running, cycling, cross-country or downhill skiing, ice hockey, ice skating, high-altitude sports, swimming, water polo, and triathlons. Medium-risk sports include soccer, rugby, football, basketball, volleyball, baseball, cricket, and field hockey, where athletes rarely perform more than 5 to 8 minutes of continuous exercise. Low-risk sports include non-long-distance track events inducing sprints, tennis, fencing, gymnastics, boxing, golf, weightlifting, bodybuilding, and martial arts. Prognosis? With appropriate treatment, Athletes can perform at the same level as peers and compete and win a medal in the Olympics and other international competitions. Complications Complications involve sequelae of poorly managed asthma, reduction in physical activity, and a sedentary lifestyle. 